I want our audience to understand what this is unlocking because, you know, a lot of us think of security as, oh, we're just looking at, it's a picture of my, you know, a parking lot. Like, who cares? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, how many bad things happen? It's not really that important. But, like, this is, like, magnitudes of importance because everyone knows, like, if just in this use case, a wildfire, it's easier to contain when it's small. I mean, obviously, by the time it gets big, it's a serious problem. Give us an idea yeah. of that. And then other things that this network security, this type of, this type of communications is really unlocking. So I think one thing that has really happened over the last 20 years plus that we've been in this industry is what I mentioned before. Bandwidth have become more and more plentiful. Storage space have become more and more plentiful. But if you look in the camera, there's kind of two things that happen there. One is the image quality. So in the early days, a camera was barely as good as the human eye to see things. So it was better to have a human standing out there in a tower in the woods <laughs> to look out and see if there's a fire because the camera would be very slow to detect it. Today, because of purpose-built chipsets and, and uh, very small fil filtering of the pictures and picking up of colors, the camera's vision, ability to see things at night is so much better than a human, best, best human eye out there. Uh, we talk about the regular camera and and one thing that is cool today you can see you can see colors out at night so if i put a camera outside of my office here in the middle of the night and i turn on we have a, a functionality called light finder that we've been doing for some 10 years that really improves the image so you can see colors at night you will see a blue sky and you'll ask me like the sky is not blue i said it is in the day and it's also at night you just can't see it but the camera can see that the sky is still blue at night so that's one of the things that have happened and that can be used for all kinds of applications but also for detecting wildfires and see what's going on um, and the other thing that's happened is local intelligence in the cameras to actually analyze the images for yeah. which you need a lot of processing powers as well and some deep learning capabilities today to do it accurately to send the information that Typically, I see a lot of green stuff here in the forest. I see a lot of yellow. You should look in this video here because it's not normal. And then on top of that as well, we have what well, you mentioned as well, thermal cameras that look in a different spectrum. They're looking for heat. Uh, if it's far away, it wouldn't necessarily detect it for a wildfire, but it's a close up. You can detect it as well. And that's actually used at some of the places where you, where you dump trash, those huge piles you have outside of cities. Yeah, landfills. And it's not unusual that you have fire starting there. You read in the newspaper, and once it starts, it takes them weeks to put it out because there's so much trash that's burning. And for that, thermal cameras are heavily used in different applications as well to do that, which could happen any time at night and no one would be there. So basically, you automate things, you do it more accurately, and you save a lot of time for those kind of fires, which is, which is great to be able to help uh, and, and also limit the cost and enhance security for, for society in general. Yeah, that's pretty fascinating that this camera can detect this well before, you know, like we, we said at the top of the show, a helicopter. You're just, just pure luck. If you happen to fly over yeah. the fire, you would spot it and then be able to put it out. But of course, <laughs> that's, that's, that's just pure luck. You know, you mentioned also the AI component and being able to spot and identify things that maybe the human eye couldn't recognize. I remember watching movies you know every movie everyone's seen a good heist movie i think you know someone's stealing mm -hmm. something right and you're in and the security guard's always in front of a bank of monitors um and i've been to vegas and i've seen that bank of monitors and i always thought to myself like how do they actually spot anything because no one can look at that many things at one time it's not possible like i can barely no. use two screens i've this is my my i was joking before the show started I, this is my first time with having two screens in a while and i can only focus on one thing at a time so like it was I think it was in like Oceans 11 or 12 where they gave, they made a talk about how it's just it's actually a fallacy. Like you think that you just think you're secure. You're not actually secure because no man or no human can watch all that. Give us an idea of how AI and machine learning, some of the things that you guys are doing are going to change security and surveillance for the better. So I, when I look at security and surveillance and where it's come from, where it's going to go, I, I look at three different phases. The first one is deterrence, which is exactly what you talk about. You see a camera and you say, maybe someone is watching it. Maybe it's being recorded. Yeah. Maybe someone can see something. So I better not do it here. I better go to the next casino that have fewer cameras. Like you move the crime to somewhere else. And that was a phase of deterrence. You put a camera up. People even have those fake cameras with a sticker under security. And the You're under watch. Camera yeah. with <laughs> With a blinking, you know, uh, yeah. red diet, and, and that that was kind of the deterrence, right? You didn't know if someone was watching, 
but most people knew that the cameras were pretty bad and you saw the grainy pictures from gas stations, someone stole gas or abducted a child, can't really see what it is. So that was a phase of deterrence. Then you had a phase of forensics where video actually became useful. You can record it digitally, you can search for it. You have, you know, hundreds or thousands of hours of video, but because of some basic intelligence, you can look for at least when there was motion in the parking lot or when there was a yellow car in the parking lot and kind of reduce the number of video to use it forensically in a good way. And also because of the quality of the video, Light Finder I talked about before, uh, and, and get, having good wide dynamic range, you actually see quite closely what it is. You can see the color of your jacket at night when you're walking out and you stole a car. And that was kind of the face of forensics that we're still mostly in today. It's a very useful video. You can find things easily, you can see things, and you can prosecute people, or you can solve crimes or, or, or improve your business with that information. Now when we're looking forward, and, and the whole industry has been looking forward for this for a long, 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 long time, is the face of analytics or proactive security where you can detect things before they happen or as they are happening so you can alert those security operators in the casino that you know look over at door six because something is going on there and then they get all the attention and alert to that so that really provides for more proactive security as well and that has to do with built-in analytics which has really been available on the edge in those systems for 20 years with basic video motion detection the problem though, and this was also the thing back after 9-11, when a lot of airports says, this is unsecure, there's a lot of people on watch list, how do we catch them at the airport? Mm -hmm. And they installed facial recognition. There was a couple of companies, uh, I forget the name of them right now, but they, they were installed in a couple of airports and they said, well, they're 90% accurate. The problem is with 90% accuracy, if you have an airport like here in Boston, Boston Logan with 100,000 people a day, that means you have to extra screen 10,000 people a day yeah, and it was yeah. just not valid to do. And the people that are really, the real bad guys, they make sure they have a feature on or an eye patch so you don't detect the face anyway. Yeah, yeah. But that said, today we're getting to a phase, especially with deep learning processing, where the accuracy is going up, where you can relatively accurately detect certain objects, certain faces, certain directions, certain movement to really make it become that proactive surveillance tool that we always want to have had to kind of go into the next phase. Uh, and that's really what's going to help those operators sitting in front. I've been in the surveillance center in one of the large cities here in the U.S. where they have access to 32,000 cameras. Can you imagine that? Like, <laughs> hey, start with the first thousand before breakfast and then keep on going to the next thousand after lunch. I mean, it's just impossible. Hey, thanks for watching. This segment is brought to us by Salesforce Platform. Visit salesforce.com slash newsletter to discover timely insights and useful tips tailored to your role. Subscribe to the channel and get more great IT and tech interviews with top industry leaders.